Well, good morning, everybody. We start on the strike of 10 o'clock there. Good morning and welcome to you and a very happy Christmas 2022 to you. It's great to see you here today. You're very welcome, whether you're one of our regulars or you're visiting us today. It's uh, lovely to see you this morning. This uh, service is, in some respects, uh, our least formal one. Um, after all the, uh, well, I said after it was very informal, but there were loads of people there. This is a bit more intimate. That's the word I'm looking for, uh, an intimate service and uh, Hopefully, Christmas Day will be the richer and the more meaningful for you, having been here this morning. We celebrate the fact, of course, that God became one of us, hearable, seeable, touchable, here on earth 2,000 years ago, that we might dwell forever with him in his kingdom. Now, this is an all-age service. You may have noticed that there are no children here uh, today. Um, we never know with this service. All our church families with small children are away with relatives this year. So I had to be ready for anything with this service. So if you can be just slightly interactive, we might not get the, we might not get the instruments out, which will be a sadness to some of us, the shakers and whatnot. We might not get the instruments out. If there was one child, then we would, you know, on principle. But uh, if a child turns up, uh, then I'll ask you to shake a, a what's it, t tambourine or something. But uh, So we won't be having the instruments uh, out this morning. But uh, as I say, that we had 65 children here yesterday afternoon. If one of them had come now, we would have uh, had all that kind of thing. We are geared up for them if they come. We have a very shortened form of our usual uh, service of Holy Communion today. Towards the end of this service, I'll explain how we're going to do that when we get there. But we're going to stand now to sing... Our first carol, which will be on the screen, O Come, All Ye Faithful.
Well, do you please sit down? As I was saying earlier, the Lord Jesus took our flesh in order that he might save us from our sins. So we're going to spend a moment of quiet now, uh, remembering the reason he came, our sins, and saying sorry to him using the words which will appear on the screen. A moment of quiet, and then we'll join together. So I say the words in light type, please join together in the bold type. Almighty God, we are sorry for all the sins that meant we needed you to send us a saviour. Father, forgive us. Help us to appreciate the wonderful fact that he came to us as a baby in order to die to make us your friends again. Lord, help us. We're sorry that sometimes we have let the Lord Jesus get lost in our Christmas celebrations. Father, forgive us. Help us to put him at the middle of our day and of our lives. Lord, help us. We're sorry for the way our enjoyment of Christmas so easily becomes selfish. Father, forgive us. Help us to show love like Jesus' love who though he was rich, yet for our sake became poor, so that through his poverty we might become rich. Lord, help us. Together. We thank you, Father, that you loved the world so much that you gave your only Son, that by believing in him we might not perish, but have eternal life. Help us, we pray, to live out our faith this Christmas. Amen. Well, do please uh, look up, everybody. Now, um, the, uh, as I say, this is an all-age service, so we do need... Oh, this is not going on. There we are. So we do need plenty of participation. So, first of all, there are no tricks in this, no tricks. I want you to tell me what you see. Somebody? A candle, thank you, we're getting the idea, that is a candle, yes, okay, and you've all seen the candle, great, we'll put the candle on there, very good, okay, now I would like you to tell me what you're seeing, a figure, a wooden figure, a wise man, yes, indeed, kidnapped from the crib at the back there last night for this purpose, it is one of the wise men from our crib. All seen it? Excellent. Thank you very much. We've seen a wise man. Now, okay. Let me see. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, what do we see here? Brian, exactly. Sorry, Brian, just to pick on you there. A teacher to sit at the front, won't it? We've seen Brian. We can confirm this is Brian, can't we, Zena? This is Brian. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, could you close your eyes, please? Just close your eyes. Thank you very much. Right. Who's cheating? Just having a look. There we are. I can see some eyes uh, are open, but never mind. Now, just keep your eyes closed and tell me what you think you hear. Sorry? A shaker, a rattle. That's right. The, uh, we'd have them all out if there were children with us this morning. We have heard a shaker. Very good. We'll put the shaker on the uh, table here. Now, close your eyes again, please. Close your eyes again, that's all of you. Thank you very much. Can you tell me what you hear now? A note, a note. Anybody want to have a guess which note? Sorry. <laughs> Director of music, any guesses? Oh, right. <laughs> no, I thought, I'd, I thought I'd just try. It was a G. It was a G, sorry. We'll have to work on this. So, <laughs> a note, we all heard a note on the piano, and it was a G. Okay, now, please shut your eyes again. Thank you very much. Keep, keep those eyes shut. 
Good morning, Peter. How are you today? Thank you very much. Did we all hear that? Thank you very much. We heard Peter speaking to us, saying he's very well. Thank you. Very good, very good, very good. Now, can we have eyes closed again? Okay. Eyes closed. Very good. Now, now I need, I need some volunteers. Can I have some hands up, please? It's not going to be horrible. Honest, it's not going to be horrible. There we are. Okay, okay. Yeah, let, let's, let's come to the back there. Okay. Now, Tom, keep those eyes shut. Would you like to... Hang on, let me just grab hold of your wrist, guide your hand down. Would you like me to tell me what you think you're feeling in this pot, please? There we are. I'll hold the pot. Not quite. Oh, Wishful oh, thinking. Oh, Brussels sprouts, thank you very much. Well done, very good, very good, very good, very good. Okay, Brussels sprouts there. Right, now, it, it, the pot said cream, but I wasn't asking you to put your uh, hand in a pot of cream. Okay, another, another volunteer, please. I think I saw Mark. Yeah, let's have Mark, okay. Mark, now this pot says mascarpone, and it, it uh, you know, it went out of date. It's been used, so it's not mascarpone, but there we are. Can you put your hands in the pot? Tell me what you think you're feeling. Yeah, nuts. Any, any advance on nuts? Walnuts. Yes, that's right. Very good. Thank you. You knew you were feeling walnuts. Very good, very good, very good. Okay, right. Now, last volunteer. Can we have another volunteer, please? Another volunteer. Come on. Oh, very good. Right, hands closed, please. Hands closed. Eyes closed, I mean. Eyes closed. Eyes closed. Eyes closed. Ginny, let me take hold of your hand. Right, the other one. Come here, the other one. Is that all right? Thank you very much. Now, I want you to tell me what you feel you're touching. Your hand. Very good. Thank you. You knew it was my hand. It's cold as well, isn't it? I'm sorry. Cold extremities. Thank you, G. You knew you were touching my hand. So we have seen, we have heard, we have touched, and we knew what we were seeing, hearing, and touching. Well, now... It's time for our next carol. Come and join the celebration. Let's stand to sing. Very good. Do please sit down. And George is going to bring our reading for us now. Thank you, George. You'll find it on page 1225. And it's 1 John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 7. Page 1225. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. 
The life appeared, we have seen it and testify to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, and we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us all from sin. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks, George, very much. Shall we just uh, pray as we cease? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the written word in which we find revealed the living word, your son Jesus. We ask in his name that you will open up uh, the Christmas truth for us this morning. And we ask it in his name. Amen. Well, you could tell me what you had heard, seen, and touched, couldn't you? And so could John, couldn't he? As we've just heard from his first letter. And what John had heard, seen, and touched had blown his mind, hadn't it? Now, of course, we knew that what, or rather who, John had heard, seen, and touched for a matter of three years at the most, was the man, Jesus of Nazareth. But John wants us to know that in hearing, seeing, and touching Jesus of Nazareth, he had heard, seen, and touched something, someone, quite different. From his hearing, seeing, and touching, John concluded first that he had, verse 1, heard, seen, and touched, that which was from the beginning. Verse 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, and which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. That which was from the beginning, something that is, that was eternal. So not like you or me. Not like you or me. If there was a small child here this morning... I was going to ask them their age and say, how old are you? And then I'd say that that child began so many years ago. I think there are probably some people in their teens and their 20s here who began so many teen or 20 years ago. I began just over 58 years ago, believe it or not. This building, this building began about 600 years ago. Terrington St. Clement first began as a settlement a bit before that. According to the generally accepted geological understanding, this planet began 13.8 billion years ago. If you give or take a few uh, million, come and talk about that later if you want. I'm, that's what the internet told me this week, anyway, 13.8 billion years ago. But John had heard, seen, and touched that which had already been, that which was from the beginning. As he tells us in the introduction to his gospel, that which was there before the beginning, that which was with God before anything else happened. So that was first. Second, John concluded that he had heard, seen, and touched the life. A number of times in this passage, he concludes it was the life, it was the word of life, it was the eternal life. Now, we could spend a long time discussing what John means by the life. Of course, many have, many still do. John, as is his way, seems content just to say that the life appeared, 
or lit more literally, the life was manifested. Verse 2, the life appeared. We have seen it, says John again, and testify to it. We can say, even though John leaves it just a little bit open in a way, we can say this is obviously more life than just our biological life, isn't it? More life than just our three score year and ten, our four score or five score, whatever else. This is more than just our biological life, more than just the chemicals and the electrical reactions that take place within us. More than normal life, well, of course, John wouldn't have written it, would he? Be no point saying the life if he's talking about just about life in our normal sense. I guess he's talking more about the essence of life, the origin of life, the source of life. That had appeared. He had seen it and he testified to it. Now, the third thing I want to say from this passage, and this might seem a bit circular, but you'll realize as you listen to it and as you read John's gospel as well, that his writings tend to be a bit circular, so I'm in good company. The third thing I want to say is that this life, which was from the beginning, had, yes, you know, been heard, seen, and touched by John, by his brother James, by the other apostles, by their friends indeed, by hundreds of people, seen by thousands, heard by thousands. This is Christmas. This is Christmas. The eternal had entered time. That which was beyond had come within. And how? Not just down into the space-time order of the universe, of the world, not just down into the space-time order while still somehow remaining aloof, being around but remaining aloof, but into our flesh as one of us, feeling what we feel, getting hungry, getting thirsty, getting cold, getting hot, getting tired, getting ill, knowing what it's like to croak with a sore throat and know what it's like to hop around with a stubbed toe feeling all our pain, physical and emotional, knowing what it is to be as restricted as we are, becoming audible, visible, tangible. That's to give us a break from hearable, seeable, and touchable. And as John makes clear, and as the rest of the Bible makes clear, becoming killable. That was the main reason for it all, if you read the New Testament. That was what the angel said to Joseph, he will save his people from their sins. That was what the angel said to the shepherds, a savior has been born to you. That was what old Simeon said to Mary in the temple, a sword will pierce your own heart too, looking on to that day when the Lord Jesus died on the cross. He took our flesh in order that, as John writes in verse 7 of our passage, the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. The blood shed on the cross. That's why even on Christmas morning, we have a service of Holy Communion, because it was all working up to the cross. So there's three observations. The first that which was from the beginning. The second, that which was the life. The third, that life which was from the beginning was heard, seen, and touched. The fourth and final little observation I'm going to make is how much John felt the need to tell others about the fact that he had heard, seen, and touched that life which was from the beginning. Verse 2, the life appeared. We have seen it and testify to it and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. Verse 3, we proclaim to you what we have seen and heard. It's really rather repetitive, isn't it? He wants to get this point over. Heard, seen, and touched, and now 
proclaimed by him. And of course, we know from elsewhere that once he'd heard, seen, and touched this former fisherman's whole life and the lives of his fellow apostles were totally changed and given over to this proclaiming because they knew that nothing else could ever matter as much, a fraction as much, again. And they knew that because they knew that it was by their proclaiming, by their proclaiming of this life, that those to whom they proclaimed it may, verse 3, have fellowship with us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us, and as verse 3 goes on, and our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. By proclaiming it, we are brought into fellowship with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Those who heard this message of the life which was from the beginning had the option then to opt into this friendship group. This is quite some friendship group, isn't it? Loads of members, one at the core, the one God, three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all those who belong to Him. No wonder John was so excited about sharing this message, wanting all his readers to be in the gang. And so, verse 4, to share in his joy, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We, make the, we write this to make our joy complete. Well, this is a tremendous passage, isn't it? Tremendous passage. Very much the message of Christmas, not often preached at this time of year, but the message of Christmas. I'm all too aware of how feeble my attempt to help us think about it a bit this morning is. But, my friends, this is Christmas when God the eternal life which was from the beginning, when he wanted to get in touch, he didn't just send a message. Not a letter, not a card, not an email, not a post, not a tweet, not a text, not a Zoom, not a call, not even a messenger. No, he came hearable, seeable, touchable, and killable, and all in order that He might enable us, yes, you and me, to have fellowship with Him and with His Father. So the unique Christian truth that Mary's little baby was Almighty God, God from God, light from light, very God from very God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, as we say in the Nicene Creed, as we've sung in O Come All Ye Faithful, Mary's little boy was Almighty God. That is not just some intellectually satisfying theory for us to ponder, though it is that. Many people have done that, spend their lives doing that over the years. It is that, but rather, more importantly, it is fundamentally personal, fundamentally personal and relational. He did it because He, Almighty God, covets our fellowship. That truth had blown John's mind. Does it do anything to yours? And 2,000 years ago, sharing it meant complete joy, despite fierce persecution. It meant complete joy for John. Will you let this message mean complete joy for you on Christmas Day 2022? Let's have a moment of quiet, and then I'll pray. Uh, 
Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Apostle John and the depth of the understanding you gave him that he had heard, seen, and touched the life which was from the beginning. And thank you that you caused him and his fellow apostles to proclaim it, that we might be in fellowship with them, and so in fellowship with you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you for this tremendous invitation. Thank you for this unique Christian truth. We pray that you will help us to embrace it and to know, to share in the complete joy which John knew in knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, in the third verse of our next carol, we will sing, Now God with us on earth resides. Let's stand to sing, Good news, good news to you we bring. Do please sit down. <clears throat> We're going to spend a, a little while praying for the church uh, and for the world now. In, uh, as we come to the end of each section of prayer, I will say, Lord, in your mercy. And please do join me then in saying, hear our prayer. So let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh God, the creator and preserver of all humankind, we pray for those of every race and in every kind of need. Make your ways known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Especially this Christmas, we pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for those who are still having to man their defenses for those who are cold, with no fuel and no power. We pray for those who are still refugees in whichever country, for those who have lost loved ones. We pray, our Father, that you might bring peace with justice to that land, and we pray for honesty, justice, and integrity around our whole world. 
that your values of righteousness might be honored, prized, and enacted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church throughout the world. Guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Especially we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who suffer for their faith, who are not free to meet to celebrate your birth, who are oppressed, whether by governments, by economic systems, by being ostracized from those around them. We pray for the church in Ukraine to be faithful in holding out the word of life at this time. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Palestine and Israel. We pray for the Christians of Bethlehem, many of whom have found it necessary to leave the city in recent years, many of whom find it hard to make a living. We pray, dear Father, that this Christmas you will encourage them again that you have been here, hearable, seeable, and touchable, born in their own city. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your fatherly goodness all who are anxious or distressed in mind or body. Comfort and relieve them in their need. Give them patience in their sufferings and bring good out of their troubles. Especially we pray for those who are lonely this Christmas. Lonely through bereavement, divorce, separation, other family difficulties or just because they are alone. We pray that as Christians you will help us to be looking out to those who live lonely lives. We pray for those who are lonely because of bereavement, for whom Christmas can be a very difficult time. Help us as we celebrate to be sensitive, to be thoughtful to those who struggle. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who are ill. We remember at the moment Emma and Tina with COVID, unable to be with us today. We remember those of our number who live with permanent debilitating conditions. We pray that your message of hope for now and forever will be uh, an encouragement to them this year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father, cheer our hearts with the good news of the coming of Jesus this Christmas time, we pray. Cheer our hearts, not just for today, but for all of our lives, that we may know and treasure the hope which you have given us for eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, do please uh, look up, everybody, and do please stand. We've come to that part of a communion service where we exchange the peace with one another, so I will uh, greet you with my peace, and then after you've uh, responded, please do greet one another, uh, wishing them peace at this Christmas time, however you feel to be appropriate. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you very much. Let's share a sign of peace with one another.
Well, we're going to sing our next carol now. Hark, the herald angels sing. In the second verse, we'll sing, Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see, Hail the incarnate deity, Pleased as man, with man to dwell, Jesus, our Emmanuel, Jesus, our God with us. Hark, the herald angels sing. Do please sit down. Well, I was saying earlier that we have a shortened uh, form of the Holy Communion now using just uh, the short words uh, from uh, Paul, one of Paul's letters to the Corinthians. Um, so in a moment, I will say those words and then uh, invite you to come up. Uh, our practice at the moment is uh, to come up this side I'll be standing up there, and I will uh, give you a small piece of bread, then cross to the other side where Brian will be standing, <clears throat> where you're welcome to take a small, uh, one of the small cups of wine. There is a bin here for you to dispose of your disposable cup as you uh, return to your seat. If you'd rather stay in your seat, of course, that's fine. If you'd like to come up and uh, just for me to pray with you, I will gladly uh, just pray with you as well. A moment of quiet. We remember the Last Supper, when on the night before he died, the Lord Jesus shared a meal with his disciples. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, to remember me. For whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
And so we join together in the prayer which Jesus taught us, which will now appear on the screen. No, no, it doesn't. I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. Oh, it's, it was before all those songs. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's begin. Our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, we're going to uh, sing our final carol in just a moment, and then we'll have our final prayer. Before that, let me just wish you again a very happy Christmas. You've probably seen in the uh, pews in front of you, we have some little slips of paper which you can uh, fill in. I think I know most of you anyway, but uh, if you'd like us to keep in touch with you, then please fill those in with your details. They also tell you about a course we've got coming up called Hope Explored, a three-part course looking further into Christian faith, and also about our new monthly uh, lunchtime uh, soup and a roll type lunch, uh, which will be happening here with just a chance to think about uh, uh, an important topic as well. That's coming up. That's called Food for Thought. So uh, do please uh, take those away with you. Uh